First, you need to decide the size of your trim tabs. The slower the airplane, the bigger the trim tab, and the faster the airplane, the smaller. The other thing you have to take into account is where you're going to install it. We can install trim tabs away from the size of the aileron or elevator since we have a vortex that generates on the edge. So we want to install them at least one foot from the end. If that's not possible, it will be okay to install it near the edge, but they lose a little bit of authority. The best way is towards the center. Okay, so you can place the, the trim tab anywhere along the aileron, one foot from the edge. Okay, once we decide the position of the servo, we need to decide if we want to install a trim tab as a unit, like this one, or if we want to install the servo separate, remotely mounted, to alleviate some weight from the trailing edge. This is the trailing edge of my aileron. Okay, this is the forward part. As you can see, the pivot is around here. Okay, so anything I install from the pivot to the back is weight I'm adding to the elevator or to the aileron. Anything that I install forward is weight that I'm, that I'm subtracting. These are the typical servos that we use with these trim tabs. This is the lightest one. This is the one that we usually install with the, when we have one unit, complete unit, and we just put it on the trailing edge of the elevator or aileron. Simple servo, the lightest and the least expensive. Then we have the waterproof servo. You can see a waterproof servo installed here. It's mainly used for amphibian airplanes. It's a little bit heavier and that's why we are trying to install this servo in front of the pivot. So it helps reduce the weight on the rear. The flush servo mount is used in airplanes where you have enough space inside your aileron and where you don't want to see servo sticking out like this. You want something really nice and flush, you can install this servo mount. It's made out of a 6061 aluminum, it's all CNC machine, anodized, it's very nice looking. Oh, and it's also got a waterproof servo, so you don't have any problems. It's a little bit heavier than the other servos, but then again, we're going to try to install it in front of the pivot so that the weight actually helps counterbalance the aileron. The way we do this, we open a hole two and a quarter inch. We then put the servo mount on the hole, drill the four screw holes, okay? And then we have a rivet nut with KM nuts. It's really easy, it's a peel and stick. You peel it, you stick it from the, from the back, and then you install, you screw in, your servo. Finally, we install the carbon fiber reinforced push rod. Put it in here. It's got a C bend at the end. We put it in here. Okay, hook it there. And then we just simply put the clevis in the servo arm. Now we have a complete servo installed. Very nice looking, flush, okay, and watertight. There are different ways you can install your trim tabs in your airplane. Okay, we can show them all here. Trim tabs usually come in this presentation. Okay, you have the rear trim tab, which is the part that moves. You have the servo, which has a servo inside and a servo case, a push rod, and the cable. So the cable, you need to find out how you're going to rig these cables through the, the aileron and to the wing. The easiest way to install a trim tab is using the stock installation that comes in the kit. You put the tape on it, peel the tape. This is a very long lasting double sided tape. The, one that, the same one they use in cameras for airplanes. You peel it and then you stick it underneath and now you have your servo. This is one already done, okay? You stick it there, very easy. The other way you can do this is we, we provide in the kit extra hinges so that you can rivet a hinge to the trailing edge. We provide small hinges like this and we provide a wider hinge 
like this one for wider installations. It's the, it's, they're both totally compatible. That means you can use the same pin and the same trim tab. Once it's riveted, all you do is install the trim tab here and put a, a pin through the hinge, a hinge pin. And don't forget, you need to install two cutter pins at the ends of the hinge to avoid the pin from coming out, coming loose. Finally, we install the carbon fiber reinforced push rod. Hook it to the servo. Okay, and there we have a complete trim tab installation. Okay, so stick, rivet. This is stick combined with the remote servo. So we do the same, we stick the fixed part, no servo here, and then we install the servo remotely using a long push rod like this one. So this is actually a bigger servo, like the one you would use for a slow airplane on the aileron. Choosing the size of the trim tabs, the smaller trim tabs is for faster airplanes, the bigger trim tab for slower. Usually you use, you use the big trim tab in the aileron and the smaller one in the elevator. You can start with one that's slightly bigger than what you think, if you want, and then they're easy to cut. They're carbon fiber, very easy to cut with the, with the hacksaw. Uh, it is important that you have complete authority, control of your airplane, even at full scale trim tab deflection. You should be able to control your airplane. You don't need a lot of authority to fly the airplane with an autopilot, okay? So you don't need very, very strong forces. The autopilot with a very small servo like this will control the airplane very, very well. There's different ways to pass the cable through the aileron to your panel. First thing you want to decide is whether you want the cable coming out on one side of the servo, like this one. In that case, you would cut a little groove on the tape and the cable will come out of one side and it's really nice and flush there. The other way you can do is drill a hole or use the servo flush mount, pass the cable inside the aileron and on the pivot do a couple of turns like this so that the cable doesn't break when the aileron moves. The aileron moves like this. You don't want the cable breaking, just give it a couple of turns around the pivot so that the cable has some flexibility. When you do an installation like this, you should make sure that the aileron or elevator is balanced. You can disconnect the linkage from the control and you can see that the aileron shouldn't be going down or up. If it's going down like this, you should counterweight it by putting some weight in front of the hinge so that the aileron can stand horizontal like this. Our trim tabs are balanced from the factory, so in case you have a complete linkage disconnection, it will stay neutral like this. It won't go up, either up or down. The recommendation for fabric airplanes is to use a hinge like this one. This hinge is curved, so it will adapt to the trailing edge tube of any fabric aileron or elevator or rudder if you're using a jaw damper. Uh, you would rivet this hinge to the rear or to the trailing edge. And then, similar to this one, you put the servo in front where you have a big tube where you can rivet the front servo. Then you use a large, uh, you use a long push rod. In short, three different trim tab sizes. The smaller the trim tab, the faster the airplane. Different ways to install trim tabs. You can stick the trim tab and put a remote servo. You can stick the whole thing together or you can rivet the trim tab and put a flush mount or different combinations of all of them. You can also install these trim tabs not only on aliens and elevators, but you can put it on the rudder. So we also have a, a aircraft automation Dot com. We have a complete list of spare parts where we sell all these little accessories that you can buy separately. If you have any questions, please write to info at aircraftautomation.com. Thanks for watching.